N.G. Coombs, The Waterfall Journey. Episode 11, Inner Journey, Part 2, The Process. We are all born into the fallen world and suffer emotional wounds and damage. God tells us that we are each travelling a known path. Psalm 139 verses 15 and 16 say, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. This means the family you were born into and the events of your life have not been accidental. That is pretty hard to hear for some people. God has trusted some with very hard journeys. However, at some point there is a possibility of a change of season. The timing of this depends on what God has for you to do in the fullness of your ministry. When you've had all the necessary experiences for God to transform, you have your moment on the beach, like Peter did. This is not necessarily when you give your life to Christ, but it is the time and place where the decision is made to be a disciple and to totally align yourself to God's way in the waterfall. To trust Him for your family, for your security and for your future, putting yourself and your life at His disposal, thus joining Him in His story and letting Him direct the part that you will play in it. My observation is that the season often changes when a person has a crisis and needs help. In that place, our emotional turmoil is the signal for us to understand how our story can be redeemed in His. As our story unfolds, there is a choice to take a risk and move into the waterfall and let God be God in our lives, or to go on as before. If we make a decision to trust God and live as He intended in His presence in the waterfall, the next stage begins and everything changes as radically as it did for Peter on the beach. For now essentially it's about learning to live intimately with God. We move into a new relationship with each person of the Trinity and the process of restoration and renewal which began when we gave our life to Christ, can now be speeded up. Creatively, God transforms the pain of the past into His resources for ministry. When we are ready, sufficiently healed and restored, in God's time, He will launch us into our full ministry, which because we have learnt to operate under His direction, will be effective in Kingdom terms. We are all on a unique path. Ideally, as people are saved and taught the fundamental God truths we're sharing here, then all believers would see there is a waterfall to step into and the reality and the consequences of the choice set before them. At the moment, we fall short of this in the broad church, maybe only because people do not understand the progression being recruited into the army seems enough. However, the reality is that crossing the line on the beach and stepping into the waterfall was only the start of true discipleship for Peter, and so for us. We need to teach the onward steps. Just being in the kingdom is not enough. The journey needs to continue for people to come into the richness of all that Jesus died to return to us. Our lives are the learning ground for our full ministries. Whatever you've been through, God can turn it around. No wound or tear or experience is wasted if we are willing to let God deal with the pain. Imagine you are a cake. 
When we give our life to the Lord, He becomes Lord of a slice, and the sanctification process begins. A slice by slice, we are restored to our Creator's pattern. Under His Lordship, we gradually become more and more Christ-like in the three areas Jesus gave us, the way, the truth, and the life. In addition, damage inflicted by the fallen world needs to be repaired. Knowing the process of how the Holy Spirit deals with our pain and being able to cooperate with Him speeds up God's transformation. A slice by slice, in His best order, He heals the wounds of the past. Holistically, the Holy Spirit will lead us to maturity and wholeness. Emotional pain that comes to the surface is God's red flag in the minefield saying there is pain buried here and it's time to deal with it. Residual pain blocks the restoration of our image and the work of the kingdom and right now even as Peter the fisherman had no idea that he was to be the disciple of the Son of God and of his extraordinary destiny you also may not have an idea of your full ministry. I bet you're thinking far too small. Who God reveals himself to is a mystery, but if you're listening to this, I can tell you that he is either calling you in deeper or inviting you higher. Standing still is not an option in discipleship. He wants to deal with your pain. So God desires and needs to heal us, but how? We're going to look briefly here at an overview of the process, but we'll expand this much more in future episodes. So how do I do that? Firstly, we need to understand the healing process. One, firstly, something erupts. When you become aware of a discordant emotional feeling that is unexpectedly strong, the question to ask the Holy Spirit is, what's going on here? Understand a healing lesson is starting. This is your red flag in the minefield. We know that the Holy Spirit can and does heal instantly, but the process of healing is also part of preparing us for our ministry. It is with the comfort we receive, we will comfort others. So there are many things he needs us to learn as we go through the process. Two, like a detective, collect the clues. Once the Holy Spirit has highlighted the beginning of a phase of healing, often by an exaggerated surge of feeling, he will bring things that are relevant to light. Often memories, long forgotten, will pop into your mind. He will orchestrate circumstances and experiences that he will speak through to help your understanding of what is going on in your inner world. Reflect and look for clues. Be aware and be expectant. Record them. 3. Cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Do the things that we will suggest in these series of podcasts. Use the tools we're going to share. Investigate your feelings. Explore the underlying beliefs you hold about yourself. Look at your behaviours and choices. Understand your story using the timeline, the spider diagram and your journal. There are videos on the Waterfall channel on YouTube to help bring the tools further to life. 4. Draw out your story. The timeline and the spider diagram will help you get a fresh perspective on the issue that the Holy Spirit is highlighting. 5. Once you understand your story, you can hold it before the Holy Spirit and often he gives you new insights and perspectives. You can reflect on where you've been acting independently of the Father. You can ask forgiveness of him where you've been going to your well and filling your bucket and you can turn away from your system through the cross of Jesus and back into the waterfall of the Father's presence. 6. 
The tasks at this stage are twofold. To exchange the lies we have believed about ourselves for God's truth. We will learn six steps to help us renew our minds. And then we'll think about forgiveness, forgiving those who have injured us and ourselves. Seven, we'll take Jesus there to the, the place where the wound you have uncovered is within you so that he can touch you with his healing power. Eight, is bringing the issue into the waterfall by choosing a godly goal to replace what you sought in your bucket. For example, if you were striving to become the perfect Christian and you'd been a people pleaser, saying yes to everything, you could now, by asking God, make choices in line with God's will and purpose for you, doing the right thing and not just a good thing. This takes time and thought and exploration to adjust your life and to get used to living out of the new place. 9. This is about letting go of pain. When all is understood and the threshold of freedom is a step away, some people experience their most difficult battle. It can seem so huge to let go of the pain and grasp the hope that is set before you. When you discover how pain has ruled your life, it suddenly seems like a friend. If it's all you have known, you may question what will life be like in the future without it. The unknown is a dangerous place. Some people feel that if they give up their pain, they will lose themselves, as their pain has come to define their identity. Ultimately, it is a choice to let go and move on. The more you trust in the character of the Father and stand in the waterfall, the less risky it will become. 10. See the pattern. Though I had many years of counselling from a professional, I also had a sustained two-year people of counselling from the Holy Spirit as a prelude to continual life lessons. Typically, we went through a lesson every couple of weeks. It would start with something unexpected, and I learned to turn to the Holy Spirit, knowing a lesson, healing, and new freedoms were ahead. I would go through the above stages so that I would understand the bit of my story that was under the spotlight. And then there would be some challenge attached to my healing from the Holy Spirit, and a narrow gate with Jesus the other side. The challenge usually led me to having a 48-hour tantrum, while Jesus waited patiently, leaning on the wall. He usually took me that long to run out of steam, and then consider and go through to the joy of Jesus' welcome and a new spiritual landscape. Healing meant freedom and new insights into both God's truths and the intimacy of relationship. Part of the importance of sharing this process is, I believe, that the Holy Spirit wants to do business directly with each of us and knowing how to cooperate will facilitate this. Disciples are vulnerable, constantly letting God heal them, and so there is more room for his love and power to flow through them to the hurting world. God honours pain and turns it into hope and love and uses it for his kingdom. Act whenever the pain strikes. Learn the process. Choose life. In the next episode, we're going to look at some of the places on our life's journey where we pick up damage and hurt. Then we look at some simple and profound tools that we can use to cooperate with the Holy Spirit as he transforms us. <laughs>